A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints. October the 22nd. Saint Peter of Alcantara. Confessor First Order. Peter was born at Alcantara in Spain in 1499. Already as a child, he manifested a remarkable gift of prayer, so that at times, when he became absorbed in prayer, the servants were unable to get any response from him. At the University of Salamanca, Peter resolved to join the Franciscan order. The tempter left nothing undone to depict the comfortable life he could lead in the world and still have time for the practices of piety. But humble prayer overcame the seductions of the evil one. Peter set out for the quiet convent of Monijares. On the way our Lord gave him a signal assurance of his vocation. Peter came to a stream which, because of heavy rains, had overflowed its banks considerably. Seeing no means at hand with which to cross, he knelt down and asked God for help. Suddenly, without knowing how, he found himself on the other side. Once received into the order, he gave himself up completely to union with God. He kept so strict a guard over his senses that a year later he could not say whether the church in which he prayed each day had a vaulted roof or a flat one. His body seemed to have been given him only to inflict pain on it. The mortifications he practiced upon divine impulse were amazing. For more than 20 years he wore an iron belt studded with sharp points which pierced his flesh and for more than 40 years he daily scourged himself till he bled. At first he was much troubled with sleepiness, but he so mortified himself that in time he got along with one and a half hours of sleep in a day, and this rest he took while sitting on the floor. God showed his approval of these mortifications by sustaining Peter's strength in a remarkable way. He never tired of going from place to place to give missions, and his success was so astounding that St. Francis Borgia once wrote to him, your remarkable success is a special comfort to me. His various activities, however, in no way diminished his spirit of prayer. He lived and toiled in this spirit, and endeavoured to impart it to others. The sufferings of Christ were the special object of his devotion. As Christ sacrificed himself for us, Peter found nothing too difficult in his service, and as Christ atoned so severely for our sins, Peter practised the most rigorous penance. The custom of erecting a cross at the close of a mission had its origin with St. Peter of Alcantara. Wherever feasible, he had the cross erected on an elevation, so that it could be seen all over the parish. On one occasion, he was so literally carried away with devotion that he spread through the air to such a cross, where with arms outstretched he prayed a long time, while rays brighter than sunlight proceeded from his person. He wrote a little treatise on prayer and meditation which is celebrated the world over. Pope Gregory XV declared that it was written under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The great mistress of prayer, Saint Teresa, who lived at that time, wished to have the saint for her spiritual director, and he aided her in reforming the Order of Carmel. He was a very humble man and fled from honours. Emperor Charles V wanted him for his confessor, but Peter begged him not to press his request, since he could easily secure more learned and eminent men. In the order itself, he was obliged to accept the position of provincial, and due to his efforts, his province rose to a flourishing state of religious discipline. Provincial though he was, he did not hesitate on occasion to perform the lowliest duties in the house. He was humble and charitable in his judgments. A nobleman was once decrying the various evils which were rampant. The saint said, Truly matters in the world are in a bad state. But if you and I begin in earnest to reform ourselves, a really good beginning will have been made. On October the 18th, 1562, he died peacefully in the Lord. Saint Teresa saw his soul take its flight to heaven. Later he appeared to this saint and said, O oh, happy penance, that has merited for me such wondrous glory. Many miracles, including the raising of six dead persons to life, occurred in answer to prayers addressed to him. Pope Clement IX enrolled him among the saints. A reflection on the reward of penance. Saint Peter practiced rigorous penance all his life, and what a marvelous reward it merited for him. He used to say, I have made a contract with my body. It has promised to accept harsh treatment from me on earth, 
and I have promised that it shall receive eternal rest in heaven. The reward of penance can be ours if we wish it, and we have more reason to practice penance since we have not lived from our youth as did St. Peter, but have committed many sins. It is not necessary to imitate him in his unusual penances. Without the consent of our confessor, it would not even be right to do so. But we can renounce sensuality and atone for our sins by a penitential life. Then our present tribulation will obtain for us, above measure, exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 Consider that none of us can say we have no need of penance. Only a lukewarm soul could make such a statement. Even if we were stainless from birth, we should still be obliged to mortify ourselves. Blessed Brother Giles was once asked why St. John the Baptist lived so penitential a life. Brother Giles asked by way of reply, Why do we salt fresh fish? Is it not for the purpose that it may not decay? Though you may be quite unspoiled and blameless, yet you should apply the salt of Christian mortification and penance, that you may persevere and appear faultless before the judgment seat of God. Consider that the spirit of penance and mortification also nourishes the spirit of prayer and devotion. He who serves the appetites of the flesh and grants them all they desire cannot raise his heart to God in prayer. The sensual man perceives not these things that are of the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 To be able to pray, you must bridle your senses, eyes, ears, tongue, and withdraw from the world. When you are about to pray, enter into your chamber and shut the door. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 If you shut the door of your heart in the spirit of penance, you will easily raise it to God and enjoy his consolations. Pray to St. Peter of Alcantara for this purpose. St. Teresa says that God revealed to her that whatever would be requested in the name of St. Peter would be granted. Prayer of the Church O God, who didst bestow on St. Peter thy confessor the gifts of marvellous penance and lofty contemplation, grant we beseech thee that with his merits pleading for us we may so mortify the flesh as to embrace more readily the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.